Today, I want to focus on our first reading, which I consider one of the most beautiful passages in the Old Testament. Kaya lang, I'm a little bit disappointed about the way the lectionary presents the story. It is cut down to the size of a regular reading for the liturgy of the Word. Mayroong niretain at mayroong inumit. And nung basahin ko siya, I found myself saying, sayang naman. They should have just divided the two chapters, chapter 33 and 34, and assigned them piecemeal to five or six consecutive days. Kasi ginagawa naman yan with the liturgy sometimes. Kaya, my suggestion to you, dear followers of this live-streamed Eucharistic celebration, maybe pagkatapos ng misang to, bago kayo matulog, you might want to prayerfully read both chapters of Exodus. Exodus 33 and Exodus 34. In chapter 33, the Lord tells Moses that he would have the Israelites guided by an angel in their journey through the desert, but he would not accompany them himself. He says, Kasi matitigas ang ulo ng mga Israelita. They are stiff-necked people. At baka daw ma-provoke lang ang Panginoon to wipe them all out for their stubbornness. So, makikipag-personal audience itong si Moses with the Lord. And the writer says, The Lord used to speak face to face with Moses as a person speaks to his friend. In his conversation with God, what I like most about Moses is his audacity, malakas ang loob, to negotiate with God. Listen to what he says. God, you called me to lead these people, and you treat me as your intimate friend. Ang turing mo sa akin, matalik na kaibigan. Now, kung talagang ganun ang turing mo sa akin, let me know your ways. And then Moses proceeds to complain. Ang sabi niya, kung di mo rin lang kami sasamahan sa disyerto, ay huwag mo na lang kaming patuloyin sa paglalakbay. If you have no intention of accompanying us, Ikaw mismo. You might as well not make us go on with the journey anymore. Wow! Can you imagine Moses saying that? And the writer tells us, God grants his request. God says to him, Okay then, I will go with you because you have found favor with me and because you are my intimate friend. Nowhere in the whole Bible do I encounter something like this. God telling him, telling one human being, Ikaw ay matalik kong kaibigan. But Moses does not even stop there yet. He continues to negotiate with God. And Moses says, If we are truly friends, can I ask you that you show me your face? Sa Tagalog, ang tawag natin sa ganito, naglalambing. And God says to Moses in reply, Hindi pwede eh. Because if you see my face, you're going to die. But, okay, I will grant your request without endangering your life. When I pass by, I will put you behind a rock. And then, as I am passing by, I will cover your face. 
I will remove my hand when I have passed by already para makita mo likod ko so you can see my back. This is really an interesting reading. The following day, Moses went up to the mountain for his rendezvous, his meeting with God. And after the Lord passed by, Inulit na naman niya yung request niya, even if the Lord has already granted it to him. Pero may konting dagdag. He says, please Lord, come along with us. Samahan mo naman kami. I know we are a stubborn people, but please, bear with us and claim us as your own. Ituring mo kaming sariling iyo. Meaning, Moses, as it were, is saying, if I'm your intimate friend, sana you extend naman that friendship to the whole Israelite people. And the writer tells us that Moses stayed for 40 days and 40 nights on Mount Sinai, Sinai without eating and drinking anything. Imagine that. It was during those days that Moses wrote on two stone tablets, the words of the covenant. What I called a few days ago in my homily, the Ten Commitments, in the Commandments. And then, nung bumaba na si Moses, we're told that his face was glowing. And so he had to cover his face with a veil. Meaning, even a reflection of the glory of God revealed to Moses was difficult to hide. Alam nyo, I think this passage must have been the gospel writer's source of inspiration for the story of the transfiguration of Jesus. They tell us about one moment when Jesus Dao was absorbed in prayer and they saw him shining out. And they also tell us that when it happened, he was having a conversation with Moses and Elijah. Moses, you know, represents the books of the law, and Elijah represents the books of the prophets, the law and the prophets. That is how the Jewish people refer to the Bible, the law and the prophets, meaning the glory of his divinity shone out through his humanity as he was praying and reflecting on the scriptures, the law, and the prophets. If the face of Moses had to be covered by God's hand as God revealed his glory to him, the disciples Peter, James, and John also had to be covered by a cloud as God revealed His glory in Jesus. You see the parallelism? The difference is Jesus did not have to cover His face from His disciples after that encounter. Our gospel today concludes with the hope that in the end time, the friends of God will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. I like that. Shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. I know we think of that as something that will happen only after we die, as we have heard in our first reading. Alam nyo, this is a remnant of the Jewish tradition na hindi mo pwedeng makita ang mukha ng Diyos and live. We even gave it a name in the Catholic tradition. Ang tawag natin dito, the beatific vision. Well, St. Paul does not seem to think the same way. In our encounter with Jesus, who is the face of the divine mercy, this vision is no longer something that will be fulfilled only in the afterlife, but already in the life here and now. Kaya, 
in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 18, he says, All of us, gazing with unveiled faces on the glory of the Lord in Christ, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. We are being transformed. We can look, na walang belo, to the face of the glory of the Lord. That if we live in Christ, the light of the world, we have the power to cast out darkness in this world. And we can only do that if we allow the light of Jesus Christ, if we do not allow the light of Christ to be hidden under a bushel basket, but rather to be put on a lampstand in order to shine out. You remember? That is in the Beat, in the Sermon on the Mount. Let your light shine before people. You're the light of the world. You don't hide a lamp under a bushel basket. You put it on a lampstand to let its light shine in the darkness. There is a song that became popular among young people in the church many years ago. And it's a favorite song of charismatic movements. The song's title is, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Shine, Jesus, shine. Well, it is saying the obvious. Natural, Jesus will shine. He is the Son of God. Perhaps we should change the lyrics and instead say, Shine, Christians, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire. You are all called to shine out. Shine, Jesus.